Hello, everyone. This is Empire Coins and Collectibles, and I hope this new episode, whenever you view it, finds you doing well. Before we get started, I would like for you to, if you don't mind, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, when I say share, that what that means is tell others about our channel. We would love to uh, entertain and provide information to as many people as we can. And perhaps through your stories that you feed back to us by leaving comments down below, we can share some of your stories as well. And speaking of stories, by the way, please be on the lookout for my shorts. I have a short called uh, A Coin Nightmare in Loveland. You'll want to see that. It's about a minute long. Won't take much of your time. Please take a look at that. And we, we plan on sharing more of our escapades, if you will, in one minute segments for your viewing pleasure. But I'm gonna show you something first before we begin. If you collect currency, you absolutely should buy a packet of these. This is for the regular dollar bill. I've got others that are larger for some of the older notes. Um, perhaps some of the Confederate notes and foreign notes that uh, I've collected over time. But always protect your currency just like you protect your coins. Now, one of the first things that you're going to look at is this, ephemera. This is something that my wife and I really, we didn't collect, we just got. We went to get our first shot back in 2020 for covid and they made us wear these bracelets after we registered to get the shot. So after we got out of the facilities, I asked my wife to give me hers. Even though this might not be interesting to you out there, for those ephemera collectors, uh, this age that we went through, this these times of COVID and all the uh, difficulties that everybody's experienced, and in some cases, tragedy, uh, people are going to look back on and want to know more about and what the people that went through it uh, went through and what their thoughts were. So I've uh, collected some of these pieces that we've gotten through the, uh, the last couple of years and I've stored it away so that uh, my family members and at some point the collectors will have something to look at. And I'll probably put a little note in here just to uh, talk about when we got the first shot and what we were thinking and our concerns were. So that's just to help the collecting community. And it will also uh, help people remember and understand what we all have gone through. Okay, so that's ephemera, the collection of paper type uh, collectibles. I've got a dear friend, Dave, you've heard me talk about. Um, he uh, does a really good job in identifying some rare pieces of ephemera. And um, perhaps sometime we'll bring him on and interview him on this channel. Now, this is not a rare note, but I got this bill um, last week. And I'm going to get my toothpick if I can find it. Where'd my toothpicks go? Whoops, looks like I've misplaced them. Maybe I'll just use this ink pen. So look at this. Look at this serial number. 4030404. Uh, it, it consists of three digits, four, zero, three, but there is some pattern to it. I almost thought it was a repeater, but unfortunately, as we go from, let me come back over here. As we go 403, we see on the other end, 403. And then from this end here, whoops, let me get back in focus. Come on, focus, focus, focus. This camera has is always given me difficulty. Can you focus? Get it right up close. There it is. So you can see at the start, it's 4030. At the back, it's 4034. So it's not quite a repeater, unfortunately. Or I should say a radar. Uh, a radar, when you ping a radar, it goes out, hits whatever object, and then is reflected right back. And and there's a special feature where you can tell the size of it typically and, and the distance that you're from it from a radar perspective. So the idea of pinging forward and then pinging it, being bouncing off something and coming back at you in the same form um, is the uh, radar note. This is not quite a radar note, almost. So I decided to keep it. You know, it only cost me a dollar. 
and uh, it certainly is circulated. You can see some circulation creases, but I thought it interesting enough that um, uh, it would be should be added to my collection. Now, I'm <clears throat> there's no particular order that any of this is organized in, so I'm just going to go through and show you some of the things that um, I have collected. This one is a silver certificate. It was minted in 1935. It is a 1935 E series. And let's see if it'll focus on you on that. Come on, focus. There it is. And you can see it's a 1935 E series. Look at the um, serial number R27362854G. It's from the Washington, D.C., I suppose, uh, a regional bank or district bank, Federal Reserve Bank is what I should say. Over here, notice I put a little note, a tag on it, and it says low G and serial number. So if you scan across, and I'm going to use this other note to kind of line everything up. If you scan across that serial number, you'll see that that G is a little lower than the rest of the uh, serial numbers, right? So this is interesting for, for several reasons. One, it was issued in 1935 or sometime shortly after that. Uh, it has a low serial number and it is a silver certificate. And at that time, you could take this silver certificate to the bank and trade it in for a silver dollar. Okay. So interesting. All right, let's move on. I'm just going to leave these out as I go through. This one is a 1934C $10 bill, okay? And there's several things going on with this. Let me just kind of hold it back where you can see it. 1934C, let me show the date. Will it focus on the date? Come on, focus on the date. There it is. And it has a low D in the serial number. And the serial number is actually low. It's almost on the 10. So you can see that D is lower uh, in that serial number. And actually, if you look at the G, it looks like the G may be a little higher. Maybe not. Maybe that's just uh, a visual effect of the way I'm looking at it. But it's G4105-2931D. Let's look at the other side just to give you a complete view. So it's a good looking note. Uh, notice the crease down the center. It is circulated. And uh, although it, it's worth some money, it's not worth as much as if it were not circulated. Those are primo notes and they're probably tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. What we have now is a $20. Uh, that, this is a Federal Reserve note. And the last one was a Federal Reserve note. This one is a 1934A and it has a high a in the serial number, 1934A series. And we come up over here and we see that the last letter in that serial number is really high. So that's B810547575A. And that A is out of line with the rest of the serial number. And if you look at the top there, right across the top here, it says Federal Reserve Note. Again, very interesting, Washington, D.C. Love it. Okay, now we're going to flip over, and I have a whole series of silver uh, silver certificates. They're Federal Reserve Note. I mean, let me back up. I have a silver certificate dollar. It's from the 1957 Series B issue. And this note is fine, fine, fine. I want you to look at that note. Wow, this one maybe I should send in to have it uh, certified. Come on, focus, camera. Come, don't, don't do me this way, camera. There it is. Look how clean that note is. And on top of that, it has a low serial number, uh, excuse me, a low A in the serial number. It's V509589855. A. And, and look over here. That A is even low in the other serial number. It's a gorgeous note. And look at the top. 
It is a silver certificate. Love it. Now compare that. This is the B series uncirculated, beautiful. Compare that with this one. It's from a different series. Uh, it's a 1935 silver certificate. But look at this note. Will it focus? There it is. It's focused. It's a 19. Whoops, it went out of focus. Come on, don't do me this way. Maybe there's an art or a trick to keeping this camera in focus. There it is. It's a 1935D. And notice the G in the serial number. It looks like it's straight on. So this one, I9876-6524, has the serial number aligned. But the serial number is positioned very close to America under the United States of America. So it's kind of high. Look at the other part of the note. Come on, can you focus? Focus for me, there it is. Now in this particular case, I don't know, the G looks a little bit low and it looks a little further away from the serial no number no uh, normally. But that's not the thing I wanted to contrast with the previous note. Look at, all, look at all this over here. Look how many different ridges and creases in it. Even though this is an older note, it's probably not gonna be worth as much as the previous note that was uncirculated. Will you focus camera? Will you focus for, there it is. You can really get a good look at it. Okay, let's do another one. This is a 1935 D series. It has a high serial number in its positioning as well. Uh, silver certificate dollar. And let me get it up here where you can see, see the series issue date. Come on, camera. Can you focus? Can you focus? There it is. Look at that. And you can see that there's some ridges and creases down there just below and to the right of the D. When you come up, that serial number also is high just under America again. It is a silver certificate. And here's the other one. Now notice this part of the, the serial number, B71373824. That G again, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking I'm imagining things, but it looks like it's pretty sharp and everything. Again, even though this is a 35D issue, it's an older note. Uh, the previous 19, what was it, 57? that was pristine and to look to be all perfect, like it would come out as a 70. Uh, that one would be a more expensive note than this one. Okay, I'm going to find something else that's more interesting for you. Let me see. I've got some Hawaiian notes here. Oh, this one's kind of interesting. Look at this note. This again is a silver certificate, but look at the Look at the serial number. It's X80088111. Kind of an interesting serial number, isn't it? And it's almost spot on, almost position between America and $1. It is a 57B series, right? And then here's that serial number again. So it's kind of an interesting serial number. Let me put that aside. Let's see if we find something else that's kind of interesting. I don't want to go too long because uh, it gets kind of repetitious with some of the notes I have. And uh, here's a, a nice looking note. It's got some creases in it. This one's a 35E series, and it has a high position serial number. And it looks to be in pretty good condition. Not perfect, but pretty good. And somebody in its history uh, wrote something over here on the left-hand side of it. Okay. All right, I'm looking for that special one that shows the uh, Hawaii. I know it's in here, so just bear with me, and we'll call it quits when we get to that. All right, moving on. Got. To, I have a lot of 57s. And that's, oh, this one's kind of interesting. This is a 57, series 57, no letters following it. It's got a very interesting serial number uh, on the right-hand side. Let me show it to you. It's got several things going for it. Come on, 
focus, focus, focus. Will you focus for us, camera? There it is. So you can see it's a series 1957. It's got a low A that terminates that serial number, B, 399281141, low A, right? And the serial number is low in its position. It's almost on top of the $1 designation that's written out there next to Washington. It's a gorgeous note, gorgeous note. So you can collect currency in many different ways. You can look for errors. You can look for things that are out of position. You can look for the repeaters. You can look for the radar notes. And any one of them uh, is an avenue for collecting and building your collection overall. And you can find some really fine examples out there. They are very much available. Now you may have to pay for them, but uh, from time to time, you'll find some that are well positioned from a cost standpoint and uh, build your collection so that it's interesting to you. Uh, not sure why I have these. I wonder if the Hawaiian note is in this. Oh, these down here, look at this special one. Now, this is an example of a star note. This is a $20 star note. And we'll end it with this note. And then maybe we'll find the Hawaiian note uh, in the next episode. But this one is a Federal Reserve note, $20 bill. And look at this particular bill. It's zero, 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 eight, five, seven, three, five, star note. Now, if you don't know what a star note is, when they're building blocks of uh, currency, coming off the printing press to ship out. Uh, the blocks have certain values in them, and I'm not sure of the proper terminology, don't recall it, but if any notes coming off the press are damaged, they have some pre-printed notes that are star notes, and in order to make up the dollar value for that block uh, of bills, they'll replace those that have been damaged with the star notes. So the star notes are, are always lower in numbers issued but even if you find star notes and they have a low serial number, that certainly adds value. That's a 2017 series. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous note, right? And sometimes you find them right out of the bank. All right, guys and gals, let me switch back to the main camera and we'll do our wrap up. I hope this has been interesting uh, to you. Uh, it's another avenue for coin collectors and currency collectors to collect. And I love collecting currency. Now, I don't, I don't collect as much currency. You couldn't tell that by this binder, of course, as I do coins. But I find it very interesting. And when you find an uncirculated bill that is in unique or low in uh, printing issue, you have something of value. Okay, I think that's it. I hope that you have a great day. And when you go out, always be looking. Because if you're not looking, you're not finding. And with that, my friends... All the best.